and welcome to a video series on the platformer for grade eights. Um, we're going to go fast, make sure you pause where you need to along the way and review the video where we are, uh, where you need to be. Starting now, we're here at the beginning. You want to locate your dough. Um, the icon is going to look like this. You'll probably find it in your finder if you're using a Mac um, or your desktop if you're using a uh, Windows PC at the school. We're going to start with a new project. Choose Browse. And if you're on a Mac, you're going to find this flash down arrow. Locate your USB. Click it. Um, and then you're going to hit select the current folder. If you are on a Windows PC beside Path, there will be a C and a bunch of other drives to choose. You're going to locate your USB, usually on G or F drive. For myself, I'm going to put this into my documents in Godot, so this folder. And now you can name it. Please name it to your name and then game. I'm going to call it uh, platform tutorial. And we'll click create and create an edit. Once it loads, you'll be in Godot and the basic scene. This is your empty scene. It'll start off on 3D. We're going to be making a 2D game, so you can choose 2D up here to switch the view. We're also going to be needing to save our information on a new scene. We'll be creating nodes in here throughout the uh, tutorial. Let's start off with making a choosing a 2D scene node and renaming it World. Once you've renamed it World, you can go Scene, Save Scene, or Command S or Control S, depending on which uh, you're using, to save the scene and hit Save. It will now save in your system file down here. You'll notice that the world is selected on the node here, and your inspector gives you more details on what you can do with that particular node. This will be important later with other nodes. Let's all select the icon.png and choose the import to change our import settings for all of our work. We're going to go to a preset, 2D pixel, re-import, back up the preset, and set for default texture. Now when we import our work um, into here, off our USBs, we will have all of our work set there, and we don't have to do the whole import setting every single time. Time to open up your USB and to bring in your work. Here's my USB. I'm going to find my file that are right here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So I'm going to select them um, and drag them over. You can hold uh, command or control, depending on your computer, to select each one, and then drag it into your system file, and they'll load right there. Now that they're all loaded in, we'll be um, able to use them in the future. We also want to change our project settings. So go up to projects, project settings and locate display and window. We're going to change the window setting here for our camera to 320 by 180, and then the display size to 1280 by 720. We'll also change the mode from disabled to 2D and the aspect keep. This way, um, it will uh, maintain your um, camera size without stretching it, uh, and uh, it'll be useful if your screen is bigger than um, the settings that we just put here. Optionally, you can change your inputs. If you'd like to have your character controlled by going left and right, um, with the arrow keys, you can leave them blank. Same thing with here for jumping. But if you'd like it that your character will uh, move with the D and A key and space key to jump, you can follow these instructions. Starting with the UI left, we're going to go to the plus button and we're going to put in key and we're going to use A for left. For UI right, same process except that we're going to use D. And for up, we're going to use space. Now we've got our input set. Our character will be able to run left and right and use space to jump. You may hit close. Okay. We'll need to save, so use Command-S or Control-S to save, or simply go up to here and hit save. 
now that we have our world saved, we're going to make our character. Come up to here to make a new scene and choose other node. Search KIN for Kinematic Body 2D. Select it, hit Create, rename this player. All right, with the player selected, we're going to use the plus mark here to search for another thing. We want a sprite, S-P-R-I-T-E. This one with the blue happy face, find it, select it, create it. We're going to continue adding all the sprites we'll need for our character or our sprites add nodes. And so we're going to come up here, add, and the next thing we're going to need is the animation player to play the animations. After that, we're going to buy the selector player again and look for collision, C-O-L-L. -L, and you should be able to find collision shape 2D and hit create. Last one we'll need is the remote. This is going to control our camera later on. Don't worry about these yellow exclamation marks. So we'll address them soon and they will disappear when we address them. All right, back up to our sprite. We're going to bring in our artwork for our uh, character. We're going to go with the sprite selected over to texture, empty, and hit load. You're going to locate your character. Here's mine. And you're going to hit open. Now you're going to get a list of all of your uh, sprites in their positions. This is how we save them out. Um, you're going to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yours might be different than mine. You may have more or less. You're going to come over to here to animations and you're going to put in the V-frame, the number you have. I have seven. <clears throat> now we'll just have that single pixel uh, character there. Um, and later on, when we step through our animations, through the frames, they're all the way there. Next step, we're going to apply our collision shape for your character. All right, I'm going to be using a capsule shape. So we're going to go here, shape, shape, capsule shape. Um, you may want to also use a rectangle shape, the most important part uh, when choosing your shape is choose something that's going to work for your character and to place it for where the top of their head is going to be and the feet are. Um, and you only want it to cover the feet. Don't worry about all the other pieces. My character is going to be floating a bit, so mine is going to be down below. If my character had um, uh, wasn't going to float and was going to be on the ground, I would make sure that the bottom would be where that kind of feet is. But in this case, my character is going to be like so. So that you can uh, float. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. There we go. All right, moving on. We want to save our work and save our character. Command S to save. Player should be there. Perfect. Hit save. All right, our next step. We want to create our animations. To create our animations, we're going to come to our animation player. We're going to come over here to animation. We're going to hit new. Then we're going to type in our first animation, idle, I-D-L-E. You'll notice I use a capital I. This is because I use it in my um, coding this way. In whatever spelling method you use, it's going to be um, needed a reference to that spelling. So if you use lowercase in your code, it'll have to be lowercase. And you'll see where we do that. Hit OK. All right, over here, we're going to loop this animation, come up to our sprite, um, and we're going to key our first frame and hit create. You'll notice that the image has changed. It's just Godot trying to help you say, hey, do you want the next frame? It's not that one. If we come down to our timeline and we scrub it, it'll pop back to our idle image. And that is the image that's actually in your idle animation. So don't get confused. All right, now that we have that, we're going to go animation, new, and we're going to use our jump. Hit OK. You're going to locate your jump image, mine's number one, and hit key, create, loop, and we're finished that. Next, we're going to do our fall. Hit OK, key it, find your fall image, there's mine. And there we go, we have our fall. So we currently have our idle, our jump, and our fall, all in the order. Each one a single frame, each one looped. Next, we're going to do moving right. New, move right, and hit OK. We're going to then uh, find our first for the moving right. Mine's on number three. And key it, hit create. 
I recommend that you zoom in a little bit so you can see each one of the frames. Move to the next frame. Option number four, key, it's going to automatically advance. And so you can just keep on keying until you get to the last one, uh, which will be one less than your to uh, total number here. Okay, I've got a total of four frames. I'm going to change this to 0.4 and loop it. Test out my animation by coming to the play button and see if I like the timing. If you don't like the timing, you may need to play with your um, spacing of your images until you get it and then change the number accordingly, making sure that you loop it. When you're done this and you put in your animations, we're going to come over here to transform and we're going to key the scale, make sure you're on the zero. This way, uh, when we move to the going to the right, we'll be able to easily flip it. All right, next, we're going to duplicate this and change it from move right to move left and hit OK. With the move left, we're coming to the scale and we're going to make this negative one. And now it's facing to the left and we're just going to key it. Making sure it's there, scrub, make sure it's good. Go up to the right, make sure it's there. Perfect, all of our animations are completed. With our animations completed, we're ready to move on to a bit of code. Um, up to our player. Okay. Um, before we begin, we should say just a good habit. And we're going to come up here to select uh, script. No. So we're going to add a script to our player. All right. And uh, you don't need to change any settings. We just have to hit create. OK. Highlight uh, 3 to 17 and hit backspace. If you don't want this window open, you just hit hide it with the animation. As I type, I'm going to be uh, typing in all the code, uh, and I'll do my best to explain it. I might end up using um, a note with the hashtag, and then this is a note. All right, and I'll make notes on what uh, I'm writing about. You're welcome to use those notes. Um, otherwise, you can also just do the code when I use capitals, I will ask that you please capitalize. Um, and when I lowercase, please lowercase. Uh, we are communicating with the program, and so uh, it is usually case sensitive. We're going to start off with some constant variables. Uh, we'll go with the gravity first. This will be constantly applied um, to our game. All right. Uh, moving on to the next, we're going to go with uh, the direction for up. This declaring the game up direction. Next, we'll do your character speed. X speed. Jump height. It's going to be a negative number. And if it's too big later on, we can change it. All right, now we're going to have some local variables. First one's going to be motion. This is going to be the character's um, starting position. At least according to code, it will not be where you place them in the game, don't worry. Um, and then I'm going to be creating a Boolean variable and on and off for uh, friction, the turn friction on and off, starting off with false. <laughs> All right, now we're going to create our first function. It's going to be a physics process to control our character. 
uh, movement or a character's movement. So. Most of our code is going to be inside of this function. All right, we're going to first apply gravity to our motion um, and then our character's position. So motion dot y plus equals gravity. So it's going to continuously apply gravity to our character. Now, if, sorry, if input is action pressed, you are right. So if we're going to be pressing the right key, we want to move our character to the right. Um, this is not going to be the most efficient line of code, but this is a very readable line of code um, and will uh, give you a good basics for controlling a character. Um, there are definitely other methods for coding. All right, so what we have here is we're going to be controlling our, um, checking if we're, if we're pressing the, the right direction. Then move in, move to the right. All right, we then want to play our animation. So we're going to communicate with the animation player and play our right animation. And we'll check if we're into the left. This will be the opposite of going the other direction. So we're going to use instead of maximum, we're going to use uh, minimum. And instead of adding speed, we're going to go minus scene speed and minus negative max speed to move into the other direction. So checking the left direction. All right, and then we're gonna have an else statement. If we're not moving left or right, we wanna play our idle. So we're gonna go animation player. Oops, we forgot our previous animation. Let's go back and do our other animation. Animation player dot play left. All right, if we're not moving left or right, we wanna play our idle animation. So we're gonna play our idle animation. Idle, and we want to turn on friction. So friction equals true. Okay, this isn't going to quite stop us yet, but we're going to. Um, it'll uh, be useful um, when we do have ground and stuff like that to begin to um, have the code to stop us. Next, we're going to put in our um, move and slide code so that we'll be able to actually move our character left and right. All right, it's going to take um, two inputs. It's going to take our motion input and our up direction. Um, and this will be useful when we actually code in our jump. For now, this is the code that we're going to need. Um, Note-wise, um, if not moving, play at all. And turn on friction. Okay, save your code, Command S to save. All right, we're going to come to our world, switch to 2D view and our script view, and we're going to add in our player. We're going to come up here, um, hit this link, find our player, hit open and you'll see your player. Um, we want to be able to grab everything without accidentally just grabbing one part of our player. So we're going to turn on the parenting icon right here, and we'll be able to move our player where you want it to be. We're going to put it right now in the default camera. We'll add our camera later on. Now, if we were to hit play um, right now, we would uh, get to select our current scene, and our character will just fall. 
we have uh, gravity turned on and the character is just going to continuously call. Um, that's not going to be helpful. Uh, we want to be able to test our code and uh, see if it's going to be able to go left to right. So we should probably put in our tiles um, and be able to move around. So in order to create tiles, we're going to come up to here, create a new empty scene. We're going to choose other node and we're going to choose tile and look for tile map and hit create. All right, with this tile map created, we're going to come over here to tile set. We're going to choose empty and we're going to say new tile set. I'm going to select the new tile set you just created. Um, oh, before you do that step, by the tile, we can need to change the size. Too large at 64. We need it to be at 32 and 32. Now we can go and click this. All right, in our tile map editor over here, we want to create a new one. We're going to click the box uh, with a plus button, find our tile map. There it is. And hit open to add the tiles there. Now that we have the, um, the tiles in here, we're wanting to create a new atlas. Select new atlas. You're going to then select the region. So um, connect the region snap and select the region so it's white like this. Let me just make mine a little bigger so you can see it a little easier. All right, selected my whole region. Next, we're going to choose our icon. Let's choose the bottom corner icon. Next, we're going to add our collisions, All right? Uh, we're going to be using the squared collision every single time. There are two ways you can do this. You can select it and click, and you'll, uh, it'll apply the collision, and you can move over. It'll leave a nice yellow uh, collision box. Or you can hover over and see the hotkey, Shift-R. You can press Shift-R, and then click and apply. You have to move over to the next one to create and apply a new one. So it's going to be a bit of a tedium, but you'll be able to do it. And you want to apply it to every single one. And there you go. If you happen to have more than one on top, like I just put this one here, you'll notice it's going to be a darker color. If this does happen, simply just come up to it and delete the one over top until you just have that one kind of shade color. Okay, our tile map is completed. We have all the parts that we need. We just need to save our tile map. So again, you can go see and save or Command S or Control S to save. And we're just going to save our tile map. We're going to come into our world, select a world, use the chain link again, find your tile map, and hit open. I'm going to place my tile map above my there. With my tile map selected, I can find all my tiles over here. I'm going to move it a little bit larger, and I can see all my tile pieces. Now, I just want to make a quick little tile so that we can test our character moving right and left. We're not going to make a whole map. Um, but if you'd like to pause and make a whole map and kind of continue later on, you could do that if you'd like. But for now, I'm just going to make a platform that allows me to test my movement, like so, within this blue box. Because remember, we don't have a camera yet, except for the default camera. With this here, I can now be able to run my game. And there we go, I see my character. Let's test the code. I should be able to press my right arrow key and my left arrow key to move my character left and right. And as long as I'm holding down, my character will animate. Now, you'll notice my character is not stopping. Um, and that's because we have yet to apply the friction um, completely in the ground. If you like turn really fast, you can maybe slow yourself down to almost a stop. Um, but we're not there yet. We need to update our code to get there. Okay, but we're getting there, um, and congratulations, you've got some movement. We're going to hit X, come up to our um, player, and we'll hit this little icon to get our script again. Um, and to make this a little more easier to see. If you want to hide the output, you can hide the output. Okay, back into our code. We're going to add more code. This line is going to be our last line of code, so I want to make sure that it pushes down. For now, we're going to check if um, is on the floor. So if our character is on the floor, we want to be able to um, jump and do all those other things. So if we're on the floor, we want to jump. So we're going to check if we're pressing the button. So if input dot is action, this time we're going to use just pressed and UI up. All right, check if jump 
we want to then move our character in the motion.y equal to our jump and player jump animation. All right. Next, uh, we want to check if friction is on. Friction is true, so is uh, true. We're checking if it is true. That's what the double equals is looking for. And if it is, we want motion on X. And we're going to apply an interlocal um, command to take our X position, bring it to zero by 20%. And it'll slow us down by 20%. Okay. Now, we want our animations to play properly. Um, while we're in the air, we don't want it to go on one switch to the else. Um, or uh, the else in their idle and just play our idle pose. We want us to maintain our jump pose. So we're going to uh, create another if statement. So here, if, uh, or we're going to use another else, sorry. Else, um, if is, uh, or if motion dot y is, less than zero, and then we want to play our animation jump else. We want to play our fall. And we are going to also check one more time for friction. Going through. And apply our friction using the lerp zero zero point two. Okay, uh, this should be the code that we need to be able to um, no longer be running around and uh, sliding, and we will be able to also jump. All right, so this will be checking our jump. This will be uh, jump. Right, apply friction. We're going to check if we are in the air. Uh, Wayne. All right, and move on character. Just, uh, back directly. There you go. All right, come back and hit play. And our character should be able to move right and left and stop. And if we press the jump key, we should be able to jump up and down and fall. All okay, right, we've got the makings of a platformer. Let's go ahead and close this. We're going to now apply or add a camera node for our player. So we're going to come up here to the world, select the world, search camera, camera 2D, hit create. We're going to make this the current camera, and we want it to follow us smoothly. So we're going to go smoothing enabled. We're going to select our player, right click, and choose editable children. And that way we can select our remote, assign the camera to it, and now it'll control the camera. I like to lock the camera so I don't accidentally select it um, when I'm uh, moving things around in the scene. All right, this is the perfect time in order to um, create a better map to test your world in um, and in. Uh, so come over here to the tiles and create a more complex map. Um, to remove any of these, you can simply uh, right click to remove um, and then you can left click to add the tiles that you need.
All right, so those are going to be a big hit. Um, add some other platforms. Good enough for now. Um, I should be able to test this and play it. Jump in. Come see us work. Following. Cameras all following me around. And then on the jump. If I can't get any of my pieces, I might need to adjust. my uh, map to get where I want it to be. But for now, that's good. Okay, now while we have a map, we're going to want to have um, graphs and other things. That will be in our new video. Um, so you'll have to wait for that next video to get the traps and a moving background and bring in all of our objects. Thank you for coding with me today. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, and uh, doing some basic game design. Look forward to the next video.